Hi, I'm Jim Jubeck, and welcome to my YouTube video for Wednesday, March 22nd. I'm actually recording this before the Fed meets, so we're not going to talk about the Fed at all, because I don't know what they're going to do this afternoon. Um, the important thing, though, is to talk about what's going on sort of around the Fed, and that's what we're going to talk about today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way you get notification when we do our next one, including things like this afternoon's uh, Q&A. Um, and it's free to sign up for the YouTube channel. Uh, also free to sign up for my free site. Strangely about that, the free site is free. Uh, StubeckPicks.com, it's got three portfolios. Uh, you can also subscribe to my paid site that's got six portfolios, including some options. We'll talk about options uh, again this week, so maybe that's the thing to do. And um, that's JubekAM.com. So thanks very much for subscribing to either free or the paid version. We love you no matter what. Um, okay, so today's topic is contagion, not uh, viral diseases, but financial market contagion. We're not going to have a real market breakdown unless we get. Um, the problems with the banks uh, being contagious for places that we didn't think of. So topic today is where's the contagion? Now, so we had, we've had uh, the Silicon Valley Bank collapse. We've had troubles at, uh, I don't know what troubles, one called troubles, uh, Credit Suisse, basically 187 years of Credit Suisse, down the tubes, gone. Um, but the question is where, what happens in places that we aren't expecting? You know, everyone's looking and going, okay, so maybe there's another bank to fail. The problem is in the current state of the financial system, there are all these interlocking relationships that people act as guarantors. Um, there, there are obligations which have people on the other end that have been sold to other people. So the question is when somebody goes bad, how does it all filter through the system and where does it pop up that's unexpected? Uh, if you've ever played whack-a-mole down at the shore, you know you got to whack the mole wherever it pops up, and that's what we're looking at right now. And here's one of the interesting things that we've seen about contagion. So when UBS um, absorbed Credit Suisse using money from the Swiss government, uh, one of the things that happened is that there was a level of a very risky bond at Credit, at Credit Suisse called uh, AT1, uh, and they were, they were the, created as the most risky bond. They were kind of created after the euro crisis as a way to get uh, to make sure that taxpayers didn't have to pick up the tab if another bank went bust, uh, gave bank more capital. Anyway, when, according to the Swiss regulators, because the Swiss government put money in, uh, these bonds would go to zero. Um, there's some, there's some controversy, there's a lot of legal cases about whether they should have gone to zero, whether the equity owners should have been wiped out first, but that's all aside. So anyway, there's this whole class of AT1 bonds in the world. Um, there are about $280 billion worth of these things. The question you should ask, if you're looking at this from contagion, is who holds them? Who is going to take a big hit from this? And they're already starting to turn up in unexpected places. We had... Um, Bloomberg reported the other day that one of the places that turned up was in PIMCO. Uh, this is the big bond management mutual fund house. Uh, and they apparently hold, according to Bloomberg, or held, uh, $807 million uh, worth of AT1 bonds, um, also known as COCOs. A um, billion dollars of, of COCOs is not a huge thing, so we're not talking about uh, PIMCO going bust because of this. What we're doing is we're looking at the issue of contagion. Uh, Invesco, uh, another big mutual fund manager, had about 370 million of these. The point of this is not to say, oh, sell PIMCO, sell Invesco, because I don't think that is the reaction. The point is to look at if you have what you think is a safe bond fund, but the bond fund sort of is predicated on trying to get more um, yield than, say, the treasury market allows. Uh, they're investing in aggressive things. Well, what are they investing in? Look, go to Morningstar or the mutual fund company itself and look and see where the portfolio is. Uh, if they're looking, if you're getting something above the treasury rate, they are taking a more, more risk than the treasury rate. The question is where? Um, and at this point, everybody ought to be looking at everything they own and trying to see where the contagion is going to pop up. 
uh, next because it's clear that we're still working our way with this financial disease through the system. So thanks very much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, that way you get notification of when we do the next one. Um, if you want more of my stuff, you can go to my free site, that's ubagpix.com. Uh, my paid site has, of ubagam.com has six portfolios instead of three. You find those links down below. Thanks very much for watching.